What is going on, big dogs? I hope you didn't miss my stupid face too long. It is week 13, week 12. Fishy wrapped up last night. And the fantasy season is cruising along. You guys remember back to draft night? It seems like the season ends and then all I can think about is the next season. And now it's already week 13. So I don't want to hold you guys for too long. As you can see from the title, there is a big announcement for the channel. What could this big announcement mean? Did I get hired by ESPN? Yahoo? Maybe I'm doing a big ass giveaway, a bunch of free shit. Maybe when I hit a thousand subscribers, I will do a giveaway. No, 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 none of that shit is what I'm talking about. So what the fuck could I mean? So the big announcement for me and this channel those of you who have followed along, it's been strictly fantasy football. And it's basically me doing this by myself. My friends were in it from the beginning, but now I kind of want to do something different. Now, I'm going to stick with fantasy football because I fucked you guys who fucked me from the beginning. And that is a passion line. But I want to change the type of content that I'm putting out on the channel. What do I mean by that? I don't mean like better video quality or anything like that. I mean different types of content. Things, you know, despite what you guys may or may not believe, I don't sit on Roto World 24-7, eat, sleep, dream, ejaculate fantasy football. I promise you. I have other interests in my life, other passions, and I want to be able to talk about them and, you know, help other people out or connect with other people that also have passions and interests, same things that I do, you know, so... I mean, when I first started this channel, Fantasy Football, is because I thought I was really good at it, whatever, and I could help people out and whatever, whatever, see what, see what came from it. And to be honest with you, I am shocked by how big it's gotten. I mean, it's by no means big at all, but um, over 500 subscribers. It's a following, very, very small following, but a following nonetheless. So I figured I would kind of branch off from that since I've already created a little bit of a following, start doing other things. That I really enjoy and what do I mean by that so first and foremost um, I want to get into nutrition and fitness and have that adopted into my channel because those are things that I'm super super passionate about and you're probably looking at me like what does this guy even fucking work out yes I promise I work out and I have a lot of knowledge on the subject and I want to be able to help people who are looking to get into the subject or connect with people who are also real into the subject and what I really want to do with the big announcement I guess is for right now is I want to have maybe a couple of you guys volunteer. My I, my plan, my idea right now is to get five people and five people who have goals or who, you know, want to lose weight or put on muscle or whatever it may be. Sorry, let me bite this up a little bit. And eh, whatever, we're just gonna take that L. Um, whether your goal is, you know, lose 10 pounds, gain five pounds of muscle, um, and I want five people to sign up and I want to do, I'm by no means a personal trainer, I'm not certified, I don't have a degree, and I'm not a fucking physio, physical therapy, analogialist, whatever those people that do fucking bio for 10 years in school and can finally fuck around with athletes' ankles and shit, that's not what I am, but I consider myself very knowledgeable on the subject, I'm in really good shape, and I know how to get people in really good shape, it's very simple. Nutrition and fitness is very, very, very simple. I mean, it's not easy, but it's very simple. And I want to take five of you guys free of charge and put you on, I guess you could say it's a nutrition coaching plan. And do it for like eight weeks. It's very simple, very easy. And I guarantee you in eight weeks, I will get you to lose 10, 15, 20 pounds. You don't have to cut anything out of your diet. You don't have to not eat fucking pizza. You don't have to not drink beer. Go out, have fucking eight shots of vodka. I'm going to put you on the same kind of eating plan that I personally do, and it works out for me great. I go out all the time. Um, I, what I, I, for, for lunch, I ate tacos today. After work, I, got a, I went to Moe's. I had a bowl. What I'm saying is very simple, and I'm, you know, through my experience of working out and, and eating right for the last five or so years, I became pretty knowledgeable on the subject, and I want to be able to help other people out that are looking to hit fitness goals or are just interested in the subject. Um, what else am I talking about besides nutrition and fitness? Well, in terms of that, let me get to the point there. 
if you want to be one of those five people, my ideal plan would be to get five people to sign up now. Um, email me. You can email me at one of two email addresses, nickirk1 at gmail.com. That's N-I-C-K-E-R-C-1 at gmail.com. Or, you know, the regular big dogs uh, email, B-D-G-E fantasy FB at gmail.com. This will be first come, first serve. Uh, because I'm not sure how much time I'm gonna have to invest into this and eventually I'm hoping all things go well and You know we could show off some fucking kick-ass results Maybe get you ripped get you a little six-pack like your boy over here And then from there, you know help more people and eventually Hopefully I can you know monetize this and get this going for You know what it is. It's it's one of my passions. So I want to help other people out when it comes to this What else am I gonna do? What else am I gonna bring to the to the um, the channel, other interests of mine. I'm super into music. I love hip hop. I love rap. None of that fucking Ray Schmegma or fucking Little Yucky that y'all listen to nowadays, you little children. Um, so I want to share with you what kind of music I listen to. You know, the playlists I listen to, different books I'm reading, like anything. Uh, I'm super into tech. So Cyber Monday was obviously not a good day for me. I basically drained my bank account, and I want to do a ton of product reviews. Any, I'm talking like, they don't even have to be fitness related, but I will start off because I just ordered a nice brand new Fitbit Blaze, but I want to do things like the Fitbit. I want to do um, anything from fitness products to fucking teeth whitening products to new shoes, style of jeans for guys my age. Um, and none of this is limited to guys or girls. Girls, if you want to sign up, I don't even know if any girls really watch my channel, but if you want in, feel free to hit me up. So these product reviews are going to go all over the place and they're just for normal people like you and me that try different things. I'm, I'm like literally an online addict. If there's a, like a, if there's an anonymous, a, an online shopping anonymous, like your boy would have, I probably would have OD'd like years ago. My mom yells at me because I got packages delivered to the door every day. Let me see, I just got a new one from here. This is from Amazon. I fuck with Amazon like way too much. Um, anyways, yeah, so I want to do product reviews. It's going to be tech, a lot of tech, um, different clothing, different, you know, just everyday shit that you and me use. And I want to, you know, tell you what I like, tell you really good products. You know, I'm going to be coming at you with deals, like really good savings deals, just things that I use in my everyday life. I guess like life hacks or some shit. I don't know. Um, but uh, the other big announcement is I will have a brand new website up for all this, which will cover everything from fantasy football to nutrition to fitness to tech to music to deals to the blog section, you know, all this cool shit. So, listen, let me hear your opinion on this. Um, if you've been messing with me from the start, you know, if you're strictly here for fantasy football, let me know if this is something you're even semi-interested in, or if you're really just here for the fantasy football content. I feel like I'm, I feel like I offer a little more in terms of personality, because a lot of these motherfuckers are like 50-year-old men who don't do shit, and they're just bald, and they sit there, and they're like, yeah, fucking... Ray Rice had 3.4 yards per carry. Like, I'm not here to do that shit. I kind of want to give off my personality and connect with people on a bigger level. So, like I said, sorry, I'm talking like super fast. I'm pumped up about this. I'm excited. And I hope you're excited too. So, um, hit me up if you have any questions about that. And we are about to get into some fantasy football week 12, week 13 bullshit. Yeah, that's really all I had to add. But going back to the whole nutrition thing, I just think there's so much bullshit you know that you read every day in the media and online and all this fucking nonsense magazines oh you can't eat this if you eat this you're gonna gain 58 pounds if you drink fucking water from a silver fucking faucet instead of a black one you're gonna get cancer so much bullshit going around it's so 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 simple and i want to make sure that you guys understand how to do these things um anyways without further ado let us get into the illest fucking theme song on the tube moment y'all been waiting for i apologize if you were only here for fantasy football now it's time to get to the good stuff let's we'll start off with them injuries chris ivory out in jacksville not even sure this is fucking relevant because he went down with a hamstring inj uh, injury he didn't return uh so tj yeldon and denard robinson picked up the slack there 
if Chris Ivory, you know, we haven't heard any word yet on Ivory uh, for his status next week, but if he doesn't come back, I can't see myself picking up Yeldon or Denar Robinson anywhere because you don't know how the split's going to work. Yeldon's been absolutely terrible this year when he's had the feature role. Um, we've seen Robinson be successful in the past, but there's no way he's going to get a feature role there with Yeldon. So Chris Ivory, monitor. We have Lamar Miller who left the game with an ankle injury. Uh, Bill O'Brien said after the game he should be fine. Obviously someone to monitor if he's on your team. Gronk. Gronk left with that back injury. Uh, there was reports that he was seen after the game and he looked like shit. He was wobbling around. Now if you go back to his college days, he actually dropped in the draft because of some back. Some doctor said he needed backyotomy problems. Name that movie. Um, so this could be a concern, and considering he was walking around very, very gingerly after the game, you know, there's definitely no guarantee that he could play coming off that lung injury thing he had going on. You know, I, I would guess that he's going to be out next week. Um, but again, another name to monitor. Tell Bennett has not been good in his, in his uh, replacement. Um, and the problem a lot of the times is they're going against these defenses, like next week they get the Rams, and... Bennett's going to have to stay in the block a lot, so he's not getting a lot of the targets that you would expect him to get in place of Gronkowski, because Bennett is such a good blocker that Bill Belichick is having him stay in and do a lot of his work on the line of scrimmage. So, Bennett, not a recommended play. Sorry for all y'all that I gassed up preseason. I mean, he still had his big games here and there, but um, nothing more than tight end two right now. Then we have the situation in Arizona. Um, obviously, they've just been shit in the bed left and right. John Brown left the ham in ah, Sorry, I'm, I'm watching a game. I focus on y'all. Um, he left the game with a hamstring injury. Uh, did not return. Something he's been battling all year. Next up is J.J. Nelson and Michael Floyd. If he has to sit and miss any time, um, I'll get into them in the uh, waiver wire pickups in a little bit. We have Alan Hearns, another another wide receiver we saw left with a hamstring industry. Why do I keep saying industry instead of injury? I'm, I'm working too goddamn hard. I'm just kidding. I don't do shit at work. Um, injury, and he didn't return to it. He, it happened on his only catch, which is a touchdown catch. Um, so, another name to monitor. I'm not sure where he's at right now. Now, Terrell Williams. Terrell Williams in San Diego is, you know, emerged as probably the number one. Wide receiver there with um, Keenan Allen's injury, obviously, a long time ago. Now, Tyrell Williams is said to be dealing with a right <clears throat> right labrum, labrum issue. Um, interestingly enough, he had the same injury in college, his senior year, which he played through. And uh, the San Diego Tribune said that it's a wait-and-see game right now for Tyrell, and they're talking about in terms of the season, not just of next week, but I guess it's kind of fucking, if so facto, the same shit, right? Um, so Tyrell is definitely a name to monitor if he's on your roster. Uh, the injury seems to be more concerning, and, and it'll probably will affect his play even if he does end up getting into the lineup, you know, next week. Next we have Stefan Diggs. Nothing to worry about here. He missed last week's game, but he practiced Monday. He practiced today. Uh, he should be ready to roll. On Thursday night against the Cowboys. Interesting couple facts here. Um, he's definitely a wide receiver too for me. I know he's been somewhat inconsistent, but um, over the last four games, he's averaging 10 catches and 89 receiving yards per game going against Dallas. And Dallas, in their last three games, have been letting up. Oh my God. Someone just tagged me in my uh, in a fucking epic Instagram picture of food. Oh my God. Show me. Ugh, can I like show you this? Oh, dude, I have such a fucking sweet tooth. I swear to God, I can have like, if my mom didn't buy fucking cartons of ice cream, which I eat like at a time, I'll eat a fucking entire carton of ice cream at a time. I'd be so ripped right now. If so, fact though, it doesn't matter. Um, Stefan Diggs, Cowboys, on average over the last three games have been letting up. Nine receptions, 124 receiving yards, and a touchdown to the opponent's number one wide receiver. That's on average. Nine for 124 and a touchdown. They let up a touchdown in three straight games to number one wide receivers, along with those monster stats. So I'm all aboard Stefan Diggs, uh, assuming he is definitely ready to go for Thursday night, which it seems right now he definitely is. Um, next up, we have Devontae Parker out in Miami. Had a beautiful matchup against San Francisco. Somewhat capitalized. 
Um, had a big play. He was looking good, looking to have a big day. Left the game with a back injury. He is day to day, so went to monitor. Um, so you know, definitely keep keep an eye out on him. Jordan Matthews said he's dealing with a sprained ankle. Um, coach said he should be good to go for their game. Uh, it is on a short week, obviously, because they played last night on Monday night. So um, it's possible that he misses the game with with one day's less rest. Uh, we saw Doriel Green Beckham have a have a big game. He didn't do shit after Jordan Matthews went down, but prior to that, he still went six for six for six, I think, eighty four yards or something like that. So. Uh, Green Beckham can definitely be a nice pickup for you, uh, which I'll touch on again later in, in a minute, because um, they have a pretty good match against Cincy if Jordan Matthews misses time, but it's expected to play this week, um, so I wouldn't bank on that. Don't break the budget. Uh, getting to AJ Green, if you're not retarded, you already know that he's not playing in Week 13. Excuse me if you're using the R word. Now, let's get to the good stuff. The waiver wire pickups. I need to get this video out. ASAP Rocky because waiver wire pickups are tonight. I'm sorry for getting this out late. I wanted to get it out last night, uh, but I hadn't obviously fucking put out a video in a while. My batteries weren't charged. Those things. T I was looking. I had to read through the fucking manual. I was scaring around. 230 fucking minutes to charge a battery. You know how much? You know how much shit I can do in 230 minutes? Like an unbelievable amount of things. It's like read an entire book. I can play like six games of Madden, which is basically what I did. Um, and I realized I wasn't charging the battery correctly once I waited for like two hours. So that was a fucking L. That's a huge L on my part. Apologize for the late video. <sighs> like I talk so fast I get myself out of breath. This, you know, it's good cardio, I guess, right? So my number one quarterback on the wave wire this week has to be Kaepernick. He's 25% owned in Yahoo leagues. Over the last four weeks, he is quarterback one in fantasy. Yes, you heard that correct. Quarterback one. He's averaged 61 rushing yards a game in the six games that he has started so far for the 49ers at quarterback. So that's like his floor. That's what he's going to give you, an extra six fantasy points every single week. Um, and now he gets the Bears, the Jets, and Atlanta over the next three weeks. They're all shitty pass defenses. Um, so look for Kaepernick. Now keep riding the wave. I don't care what your political, what your... If you're black, white, green, yellow, Chinese, Puerto Rican, fat, white, Puerto Rican, Chinese girls, I don't care what you are, Kaepernick needs to be in your lineup. And he's he's like a top seven play now going forward, especially against these teams. Next up, we have Matt Berkeley. Matt Berkeley, the USC product, USC quarterback. He's 1% owned, <clears throat> rightly so. Who the fuck would have started him last week? Uh, but he actually looked pretty good. Do for 300 yards, three touchdowns, and his wide receivers had 10 fucking drops. So imagine how big those numbers could have been. I mean, more so the, the bigger takeaway here was the eye test, and he actually looked pretty good in the game. Um, so now they get a San Francisco 49ers pass D at home, was obviously one of the bottom pass Ds in the league. Um, they've allowed a 26 to seven touchdown to interception ratio on the year to opposing quarterbacks. Dial your boy Barkley up if you're in a 12, 14 team league and you're desperate. And lastly, in the quarterback spectrum, we have Ryan Fitzmagic, the GOAT. I'm, I, if I'm a Jets fan, I'm so happy we paid all that fucking money to him in the offseason. Should let his Harvard ass ride away and go write a book or some shit. If so facto, you need to figure out a quarterback situation for week 13. Ryan Fitzpatrick could be your boy. Played pretty well against the Patriots. 270 yards, two tutties, and now he gets. Um, Indy and then San Fran two shitty shitty pass defenses and we all know about his weapons on the outside uh, Quincy Anunua is coming off a career day Brandon Marshall no need to explain there he's got good pass receiving backs Forte Powell and we have this boy Robbie Anderson the young blood you know making a name for himself as a legit playmaker so fits with the weapons and the uh, plus matchups he's a guy I'd throw in my lineup if, if I'm desperate that's your quarterbacks. Let's get to the running backs. Now, we have a couple running backs who are already pretty highly owned in Deion Lewis and Tim Hightower. They're both 57% uh, owned, I believe it was in Yahoo. Now, Deion Lewis, we saw coming back from that injury, obviously, the second game back, he, they're scaling up his workload little by little. And what we're seeing is he's completely splitting the passing down 
um, work with James White still. I still do think Dean Lewis will eventually surpass him, so he has more value going forward than he does in this immediate future. But we saw Lewis start eating into LeGarrette Blunt's rush, uh, rushing load, so um, that's something that could be pretty valuable if Dion Lewis starts seeing any any work inside the 10 that's, you know, because teams are going to have to say, hey, they're giving Lewis, Lewis rushing work, um, so they not only need to play defense on him rushing, but that would mean that he will get more work uh, passing overall, you know, so um, something to keep an eye on, see what the, he's still splitting, you know, it's a pretty, pretty split down the middle in terms of snaps, um, James White actually saw more targets and more receptions and stuff like that, but uh, I would assume based on Lewis's elite athleticism, he's going to eventually take over that role. So he could be a huge fantasy factor in the playoffs for you. And like I just mentioned, Tim Hightower, they are in a complete backfield split there in New Orleans. Um, you know, Mark Ingram looks like he's running like a fucking madman over there, pr probably because he was threatened with his job. Job security, that's what's going to happen. He's going to run like his mother fucking told him to. Now we have Tim Hightower, who has gotten double-digit touches in his last five games. And in four of those games, he's gotten at least 17 touches. So, um... His floor is double-digit touches, and it's probably going to go way above that. He's a good pass catcher in an offense that puts up fucking 40 points a game and an offense that throws the ball 35 to 40 times a game. Um, so he's clearly going to get enough work there to give you an RB3, at worst, floor, if not higher with more touches. Um, now they get Detroit, the middle of the pack, Rushdy, and then they get Tampa Bay, who's... Tied for seventh in the league, tied for seventh worst in the league, letting up 4.4 yards a carry to opposing teams. So he's got pretty good matchups coming up, and there's no reason for the Saints to, to start limiting his work. Lastly, we have Kenneth Dixon, the young boy out of Baltimore, the rookie who a lot of people expected to take over that lead back. It's taken a little bit longer than expected, but it looks like it's finally coming. His time is coming to shine. Um, the problem with Terrence West is the Ravens just don't, even when he's rolling, even when he's fucking hot, they don't want to, they don't want to give him the rock. I don't know, it pisses me off because he's on one of my teams that I need him to do well in. He'll be like 8 for 45 and, and Harbaugh's like, nah, nah, chill, son. Nah, Dixon, get in. Dixon, I mean, for what it's worth, he's a more athletic Probably just a better overall back. Terrence West is almost like a less athletic version of Jeremy Hill. He can pound the ball, he can catch the ball, but he just looks kind of stupid doing it all. So I do believe Kenneth Dixon will eventually emerge as the lead back there in Baltimore. Um, and last week was actually the first week in which he outsnapped Terrence West and outtouched him. He had 17 touches last week. So if you're going to give a guy like Ter uh, Kenneth Dixon 17 touches, you know, he's that's a that's a going to be a hell of a floor going forward. So that rounds out the running backs. Now we have a long ass list of wide receivers, so I'm going to try to get through this quickly. Darrell Green Beckham, five percent owned. I touched on this before. He had his big game this previous week. Um, six of eight targets for 82 yards on Monday Night Football against a shitty Packers D. Uh, I think this is more so. Um, supplemental to Jordan Matthews' injury. If Jordan Matthews ends up missing time, Darrell Green Beckham would, by default, be the number one passing option, or the number one wide receiver, at least, in that offense, which could be pretty valuable. Um, so, even if Jordan Matthews is a little banged up, who knows? So, in deeper league, Darrell. Tyreek Hill, and, I mean, he's not a secret anymore. Coming out of the draft, a lot of people loved him. He was like, he's like one of those guys, like a John Brown, Antonio Brown, like one of those little guys who were like, fuck the world, because y'all been shitting on me because I'm a little guy. And now he's like, I'm a beast. Now y'all know me. He's 5'10", he's like 185 pounds. He ran a 4.24 at his pro day, 40 yard dash. In case you don't know what that means, that is tied for the fastest time of time, of all time, of Earth in history, of the fucking galaxy, with your boy CJ2K, Chris Johnson. So in case you weren't aware of how quick and how fucking fast this dude is, he's the real deal. He had a rushing touchdown, a receiving touchdown, a, a return touchdown. The first dude to do that since I forget who the dude was who did it, and I forget when it was, but it's some pretty legendary fucking shit. Um, so Tariq Hill has uh, been dominating basically since Macklin's gone out with the injury. 
17, over 17 fantasy points per game he's averaging with Macklin out. And uh, Macklin hasn't even practiced yet since his injury in week nine. So there's no signs of him coming back to the team. As long as Macklin's out, Tyreek Hill should be the featured passing option in that offense. Fire that boy up. I'm so, uh, there's a couple leagues in which I'm probably going to start Tyreek Hill over Allen Robinson against the Vikings. So that's how much I, that's how high I am on Hill. Um, next up, we have Marquise Lee. 29% owned. If I didn't say Terry Kills, 36% owned in Yahoo Leagues. Marquise Lee, the slot receiver from Jacksonville Jaguars. Um, now he's gotten at least six targets in nine of the ten games he's played in. Now we have this injury to Alan Hearns. We had Julius Thomas sit out. Marquise Lee is the guy that Blake Bortles goes to over the middle. Now that Hearns is gone, he's going to get more work outside. It means more targets overall. Um, should see a huge boost in targets. He's scored in two straight games now, and he's actually surpassing Allen Robinson as his favorite target, which is just fucking ridiculous. But, you know, whatever fucking goes through Blake Borrell's mind, I have no clue. At this point, I don't think anyone does. It doesn't matter. Marquise Lee is a good fill-in for you, um, even against Denver. I think he's going to get a lot of underneath targets, and I think he's going to rack up PPR points. So, Next up, we got Quincy Inunua of the New York Jetters. He is 28% owned. He had his career day, five for five, five receptions, all five targets, 109 yards and a tutty. What more do I need to say? They get Indianapolis next week. Um, so if Vontae Davis comes comes ready to play and sticks up on Brandon Marshall, expect Inunua to build on that career day and see a ton of targets. Uh, Andrew Luck will be back, so should be a high-scoring affair. Should be a big shootout. Uh, so Fitz will be throwing the ball a lot. If you understand what I'm getting at here. So Anunwa can definitely be fired up as a wide receiver three. I'm pretty confident he'll have a big game this week. Next we have Marcus Wilson. Um, now I know the whole Bears offense is like a fucking lottery shoot over there. Like, who, oh, Marcus Wilson this week and Cameron Meredith this week. Maybe fucking Eddie Royal might mess around and fucking get more than two catches in a week. Uh, but Marcus Wilson looked like the best receiver on that team last week. He reeled in 8 of 11 targets, 125 yards, and a touchdown. He absolutely dominated the last drive of that game when they needed someone to dominate the last drive of the game. Um, so now, you know, still no Alshon Jeffrey, still no Zach Miller. Um, banged up Eddie Royal and a competent Matt Barkley against San Francisco at home. You could do worse than Marcus Wilson this week. Let's move to, he's 1% known by the way, I don't know if I told you, if I told y'all that. Move to Brandon LaFell and Tyler Boyd. Now obviously the AJ Green injury kind of opened up some targets for that team. Their offense as a whole is just not good besides Tyler Eifert. So I'm not very high on either of them. Um, AJ Green is going to return soon, so I'm not trying to break the bank on either of these guys. If you had to prefer one to the other, it's easy to say Boyd right now after the game he just had. Um, but Brandon LaFell's back-to-back -back games with nine targets. He is the bigger target. He is, you know, the better outside player. And we've seen him, you know, have big games in his NFL career. We've seen him be successful. Um, so I, I think they're they're going to see an equal target share, somewhere from like seven to ten targets each of them. And in my opinion, I think Brandon LaFell's more likely to find the end zone than Boyd, just based on him being an outside receiver. Um, but I, I kind of think it's a toss-up. Um, in a PPR play, I would go with Boyd because he's more efficient. He catches more of his targets than LaFell does. But um, overall, I would consider neither of them more. Probably Boyd a wide receiver, th a wide receiver three with a solid floor, and LaFell a wide receiver four with a higher upside. Um, yeah, and then we get to JJ Nelson of the Cardinals. Now we had that injury to John Brown. Obviously, I was saying the hamstring injury. We don't know if. Um, we don't know what his status is going to be, you know, so he didn't hit, you know, I see like my titties in the fucking, sorry, never mind, <laughs> disregard that, um, he's 19% owned in Yahoo Leagues, we see John Brown had this hamstring injury, which he's been battling all year, we don't know what his status is going to be for week 13, now you could either go one of two ways, JJ Nelson or Michael Floyd, Michael Floyd hasn't done shit this year, and he's also a little limited, and you could see it in last game. Now, they play the Redskins next, which is why I would lead lean, word to purple drank, I would lean towards J.J. Nelson 
over Michael Floyd because if Michael Floyd does in fact suit up, he will be their outside receiver, which means he'll get a ton of Josh Norman, leaving the middle open for J.J. Nelson. And I'm only on him if John Brown doesn't play. Otherwise, I'm definitely not picking him up. I'm definitely not using any budget on him. But keep an eye on that. And lastly, we have, obviously, Sammy Watkins. Now, this is, in, I'm in like 10 leagues. He's not available in any of them, but he is available in 28% of Yahoo leagues. So if he happens to be available in one of the leagues you play him, scoop his ass up. He's finally starting to see more snaps. Um, what do you go, three for 80, caught three balls, 80 yards. Last game, uh, including a 62 yard bomb. He looked really good. He got 45% of the snaps in this game. That number is obviously only going to rise. They get Oakland this week, um, who is allowing the fifth most passing yards per game. And they're also the second worst pass defense in the NFL in terms of yards per attempt, um, which is a which is a better, uh, it's a better, what's the word I'm even looking for right now? Which is a better, it's different in a, in a different but better way. Um, that's from a movie, and I don't, that probably didn't make sense. But yards per attempt is a, is a better way to measure pass defenses in terms of being good or bad. Just same way as yards per carry rather than just looking at like the amount of rushing yards you allow per game. So they're second worst in yards per attempt, and Sammy Watkins is a guy who will beat you deep. So he'll build on those 45% of snaps, and he he will definitely return huge value if you can scoop him now uh, down the stretch. He could easily put up wide receiver two with wide receiver one ceiling numbers for your fantasy playoffs. So um, if I have, if he's available on the wire, I have no problem breaking the bank um, on Sammy Watkins here. And that wraps up the wide receivers. So let's get to them tight buttholes and tight ends. First on the list, we have Vernon Davis. So we saw Jordan Reed. Um, get injured and supposedly it's pretty serious. They haven't actually ruled him out of anything yet, but there are reports that say he can miss multiple weeks, if not just one. And we've seen Vernon Davis do very well with Jordan Reed out this year. He's kind of resurged himself. He's 9% owned in Yahoo leagues. So he's widely available. Um, he's resurged himself in this Washington offense. And um, a little fact I found now he has gotten more than one target meaning two or more targets in seven games this year. And in six of those seven games, he's gone over 50 receiving yards. So as long as he gets his targets, which is almost guaranteed if Jordan Reed sits, he will put up a nice floor of 50 to 60 yards for you and maybe get the end zone. So um, one downfall is they get Arizona next week, who has just been absolutely shut down. You literally can't start a tight end against Arizona defense. They haven't allowed more than 53 receiving yards to a tight end, and they literally haven't let up a touchdown to a tight end yet. So you can't play Vernon Davis there. Um, but the, the big thing is here is Jordan Reed's injury might be serious, and he might miss multiple weeks, which would give long-term value to Vernon Davis. So I'd scoop him if you have an extra roster spot or if you're desperate for next week's tight end or something like that, you know. Which leads me to the next big tight end pickup, Vance McDonald. Um, shouts to Mickey Doy, shouts to Chick McNuggets, shouts to Colin Kaepernick resurging this boy. Now, McDonald is 10% owned in Yahoo leagues, uh, but he's been a top five fantasy tight end over the last four weeks. So him and Kaepernick are finally getting this connection going. And uh, a lot of people were high on McDonald coming in. I was one of them. Uh, it hadn't panned out because of the whole situation going on in San Francisco. They had nothing going at quarterback, and now they finally do. They found a steady QB play, and McDonald's showing up. So um, he's had at least six targets in five straight games. <sighs> I got to sit up. I need good posture. He's had at least six targets in five straight games, um, and now he gets the Bears. And the Bears have allowed a touchdown to a tight end in three straight games. So every tight end that goes against the Bears, the last three weeks has gotten – has hit that pay dirt. They scored a tutty, and there's no reason why Vance McDonald had a motherfucking farm, can't hit the end zone, boy. So, um, that wraps it up for tight ends, and I guess I'll throw it in defense for you, because I wrote one down here. My defensive pickup for the week would be Baltimore against Miami. And here's my thinking, Baltimore is the elite run defense in the NFL this year. They are the best run defense in the NFL. And what do the Miami Dolphins do well? They run the ball. 
but not lately because their offensive line is so banged up. And Jay Jai, since he's had those big, big games four or five, six weeks ago, he's averaged 3.8 yards per carry over the last three games, mainly because that offensive line is so beat up. So Baltimore will have no problem taking away that run game, which would mean they will force Tannehill to throw the ball 30, 40 times if necessary, um, which could lead to multiple turnovers, which is what I kind of see happening. So Baltimore, if you're desperate for a defensive play this week, I like Baltimore a lot. So those are my injury wrap-ups. That is the waiver wire pickups. I hope this hits you in time and you can check this out before tonight. I realize this is fucking late and I apologize again. Um, but anyways, you can always obviously follow me on Twitter. I changed the Twitter name because since I'm going to be changing it to, I didn't change it a lot just because I'm not only focusing on fantasy football and we focus on other things. It is now, since BDGE was already taken, it's at BDG. E A T. So big B D G E. You know, big dog got eat. So follow us there. Obviously, you can like the video if you like the video. Subscribe, share it, thumbs up, do whatever you gotta do. Let's get global, baby. And um, as going back to the other thing when I was talking about how I was expanding the content, let me for real. Let me know. I, I appreciate all you guys that reach out, all you guys that subscribe, all you guys that give the thumbs up and comment. I apologize if I don't get back to you sometimes. I've been super, super, super busy working on the new website. And, um, you know, I, just, I have work and I have, you know, holidays and I have family and I have friends and I got multiple girlfriends. I'm just kidding. I got two wives, only one girlfriend. You know, it's just I have a lot on my plate and I'm trying to connect with as many people as possible. So, this, so let me know what you think about this whole idea. Again, if you want to sign up, I want to help five people for absolutely free please email me at either of the emails listed below and i'll link them in the description so stay looking out for my first product review this week probably what is that? well i got a date on thursday i got a hot date um so not thursday i'm gonna get one i'm not going out friday i'm going to atlantic city on saturday so Maybe tomorrow, because tomorrow's Wednesday. I have Wednesday and Friday free. So I'll get something out tomorrow, probably, and then maybe Friday as well. So I'm really excited to start this whole new fucking content on the channel. And I hope you guys are excited, too. It's going to be cool. It's going to be fun. And I think it's going to help a lot of you guys. You know, because we're all just normal people, man. I'm trying to help you guys out. So if you have any suggestions, anything you want to see, let me know. Very much appreciated. Love you guys, as always. Big dogs. Checking out.